Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I know it's been a while since I've put up a video onto my YouTube channel. That's because of half term and there's been a lot of changes in school at the moment, so it's been quite difficult. But I'm back at it today, which is really exciting, and I hope you enjoy this game creation on Scratch. Remember, Scratch is an online platform as well, so you can download it if you, if you have an iPad, but I just use the online version on my desktop. This game is about being a bear and the bear collects points and increases the score by collecting apples falling from a tree. You could adapt this game if you wanted to by making the bear move quicker. You could also make the trees move slower or faster, which would change the complexity of the game. You can make there be less apples or more. And also you could add a new element such as there's a special apple like I've done, which is worth more points. If you wanted to use your creative skills even further, you could create a game in a similar way to this. And instead of a tree, you could have something like a pyramid. You could have the Egyptians running around catching something falling from the pyramids, or you could just change it by using a different animal or a different sound. It's up to you. Hope you find this tutorial helpful. In order to get onto this, just remix the link, which is underneath this video and it would be great to see you posting your videos as well for your teachers to see them. I hope you enjoy it. If there's any questions, please use the comments underneath this video. See you later. In order to get onto the template, I'm just gonna copy and paste it into my URL bar. And you can see I've got the template started already for me, and I'm gonna see inside. The reason I'm using a template is I've already got the tree set up. You can see that sprite down here, the apple, and the bear walking. I've also got this backdrop set up, which looks like I'm in a forest, which makes sense because I've got a bear as well. You can also see that I've got a score at the top of my screen, which means that this is definitely gonna be a game because we've learned in the past that in a game, you have a score that you can accumulate and there's normally a way to lose points too. Let's get on with our coding then. The first thing we need to do is make sure that this tree does not move the reason for that is because we're going to be using the mouse controls to control the bear and if we're clicking around the screen we might end up moving the tree and then the apples won't fit onto the tree correctly and it would just make our entire line of code look a mess. So the events that I'm going to use here are when play clicked and under control I'm going to use forever. What I want to happen under looks is this tree is going to go to the back layer. So I'm going to use the drop down to select back. And lastly, under sensing, I'm going to set the drag mode to not draggable. And that is the line of code you need for the tree to start with. After the tree's been coded, I'm going to go onto the apple and write some program for this. So the same thing under events, when the flag's clicked, the first thing I want to happen is the apple to go to the front layer so you can see it really clearly. So under looks, I need to go to front layer. And then we need to think about how many apples I want to be on this tree for the bear to catch. This is gonna make it easier or harder for you when you're playing the game because it will show, well, it will pick from a wider scale and you won't know which apple's about to drop if there's more of them. So I'm gonna use the repeat block and I'm going to create 15 apples because I think that's a nice amount to start with. And then I'm going to create a clone of myself. So the apple is going to go to the front layer, repeat 15 times, creating a clone. And then after that, it's going to hide. Right now, you've created the correct amount of apples. You could change this if you wanted to, but they are hidden. So I need to write a new line of code to get all of the apples to start on the tree and show themselves as well. So you can actually try and catch them. So under events, this time, I'm going to put on when I start as clone, then I need to show, which is under looks. After this point, I'm going to go to a random position using the motion button, but the random position needs to be on the tree. So you need to go into your control and you need a repeat block. So repeat until, and then I'm going to go into operators. So I've got my repeat until, and then I've put in the operator where I'm comparing the two. So something happens and something else happens. So a Boolean. And then I need to put in 
some sensing, so touching, and I'm going to change the touching one to touching a or touching the tree one. And then I'm going to put another one in saying about touching the something on the y axis. So that's the bottom of the tree because otherwise it would count the trunk as well. So I need operators again. And y position is less than minus 45. There we go. And I've snapped that one in. After this, I'm going to repeat, go to a random position because I want that to keep happening. And then I need to wait because I want there to be a difference of when the apples are dropping. So they're going to wait and then that's going to happen. And pick random. I'm going to change this from 2 to 30. You'll notice with a lot of games, they do a lot of picking random things. This just means that it's something out of your control and it's going to randomize it. So it leaves an element of chance in the game, which means you can't predict, which is really important. And now I need to add the forever block underneath this and change by minus, let's try 20. And let's run that and see what we've got. So you can see the apples are falling to the floor here, which shows that that line of code is working. However, I don't want the apples to stay on the floor. They should be getting caught by the bear. So that's what I'm going to code next. So in my game, you can see all of the apples are staying at the bottom of my screen. If I want that not to happen, I want them to disappear after actually touching the bottom of the screen so it doesn't get too confusing. So what I need again is when I start this clone. So I'm going to duplicate this block here but I'm going to remove some parts of it. So I just need when I start this clone and then under control, I need forever. And then forever, if the apples are touching the edge, so that means the edge of the screen, then they're going to delete the apples. So I need if touching edge, then it's going to delete this clone. Let's try this again. So you can see when the apples are hitting the bottom of the screen, they're disappearing this time. However, I'm thinking these apples are going down quite quickly. So in my previous bit of code where I have forever, if I change the Y axis by minus two instead, you'll see that the apples fall a lot slower. And this will make my game a lot easier to play because you have more time to get underneath the apples. So you can play with that part and see which you think works better. Do you prefer it if the apples are quicker or slower? So at this point, the apples fall to the floor and they disappear. I actually want the score to go up when the apples are touching the bear. So on the end of this code here, I'm going to add another variable, which is going to be if, in fact, I'm just going to repeat this part. So let me just snap this out, duplicate it. And if touching the bear walking, I'm actually want to put a score in there. So under control, or sorry, under variables, I want to change the score of apples by one. So I'm going to watch now, and when one of the apples touches the bear, it should change my score up in the top left corner by one. And you can see it's done that now. However, you can see when I'm pressing the stop button at the top of my screen, it's not resetting the score. So that's what I'm going to look into doing next. Next of all, then, I'm going to click on the bear walking sprite and I need to put in the code to actually move the bear around. So to start with, I'm going to put the events on when the flag's clicked. So this means that as soon as you play this, the program is going to start running and you can control the bear. I want the bear to make sure it's going to the front layer, which I can get underneath looks. It's going to go to the front layer and then I want to set the rotation. So set rotation style left to right so that just means the controls are going to be moving from left to right and after this and the variables i'm going to set the score of apples to zero so as soon as the, that button's pressed the green flag the score of apples is going to drop to zero and then i need the controls to last for all of the game so i'm going to use the forever block underneath this and under forever i'm going to use if and then so a variable and then operators if the mouse is greater than zero and mouse down then something happens so again 
I need to use the boolean if and then I'm going to use mouse is less than zero so let me drag that in and then I need that underneath sensing and mouse on the x-axis is less than zero and I'm just trying to snap that in it can be quite hard to snap them in sometimes and mouse down then I want the bear to look like it's walking so I'm going to just click on costumes quickly and you can see that I've got bear walking so I'm just going to swap the costumes so into looks I'm going to put next costume because you can see there's so many I want it to go through all of these costumes and then I want it to point in the direction of 90 and move five steps forward the reason I'm using 90 degrees is because that's the right angle triangle so it's going to be moving across in a flat line so point in direction 90 and then I think move five steps is a nice point to start with if I wanted the mouse to move quicker then I could do that I could change the amount of steps I've now got a way of getting the bear to move to the right but I also need a way of moving the bear to the left so I'm just going to duplicate this part here and snap it underneath however it says if mouse is greater than x so it's exactly the same so i just need to change this part so i'm going to click out and i want if mouse is less than so under sensing if mouse x is less than 50 it should actually be it's less than zero and mouse down the next costume and i want it to point direction 90 but this needs to change to minus 90 because I'm going back the other way now. And it's going to move five steps. So I'm going to play this and see what it looks like. Mouse down means when I click instead of just where your mouse touches. You could change that if you wanted to. So if I want to go to the right, I need to click that way and left the other way. You can see my scores one to zero. And I've got one now, I've got one apple. And my score is going up gradually. What you can look into doing now is improving your game. So a really nice way to do this might be to create some sounds when an apple's eaten. So in this line of code here, when you start as a clone, if the apple was touching the bear, you wanted to change the apples by one, so change the score, but you could also get it to play a sound. So what you can do is you can click the sounds at the top of your screen and there's already the sound set up called chomp. If you click on this button, choose a sound, there's a huge library of lots of different sounds that you can choose from. So animals would be a nice one. And you could actually change the animal at the bottom of your screen if you wanted and use something else. And you could use a different sound to work with that. So back into the code and into sound. And I want to play the sound chomp. And then I want to delete this clone afterwards. So let's run this again. And you can hear that it ate the apple and it made that sound. You might have just noticed when I was clicking that I accidentally moved the tree. The reason this happened is because I'm not on full screen mode. So when I'm playing my game, if you play it on full screen mode, this won't happen at all. So this is how I'd recommend playing it and moving side to side in order to eat all of the apples in the tree whenever they fall. And then you can look into some ways to make your game even better. That you could have another apple on your tree, something like a golden apple, and this would be worth even more points if you manage to eat it. So what you would do in that position is you would have to go into your apples and you duplicate and you've got an apple too and then you just need one apple for this to happen and I'm going to go into costumes and I'm going to make sure that I've changed the apple to make it nice and yellow like this I'm going to use the fill so now I've got my golden apple ready to code however I want this apple to be maybe worth more points like I said so I could change it to five so that's a really nice way to try and advance your coding, see if you can add another apple which joins and you can play that as well. So that's it. I hope you enjoy it. 
have a go at coding and challenging yourself even further when you have a go.